again guys, it's Mel from Two Feathers Gallery and I'm just responding to a few comments that you guys have actually mentioned in the comment section. Thank you so much and I'm really really happy to see what I can do to actually help you improve and elevate and create more possibilities with your polymer clay creations. So anyway, I got a comment from Top Tank who actually suggested with the copper piping, he or she said, perhaps you can lightly sand the copper pipe to remove any of the marks. So as you remember in the tutorial, I put the clay up to here because I was trying to cover the tool mark from the pipe cutter. So this is actually the pipe cutter here. If you want to know how to use it, please go and see my tutorial on how to actually make this copper bale technique. The mark that Top Tank was actually talking about was this tool mark here. And so they suggested to lightly sand it. So I'm going to actually do that to show you guys what's going to happen. And I'm going to do that in a few different ways. So the first way is with a fine steel wool pad. So let's go ahead and see how that goes. There's a couple of really, really important things to note that I've learnt whilst doing this and that is number one, um, please I do highly recommend that you wear a particulate mask because you can breathe all of the metal shavings and all of the particles in the steel wool pad in, which I felt in my throat straight away. Not a good thing, recommend wearing a mask. The second one is that I actually really, really love how and this is a happy little accident. Thank you so much, Top Tank. I'm, sh I'm sure that many people out there will be like, whoa, this looks amazing because it's just brought up the copper sheen so beautifully there. It's got rid, of, got rid of this kind of grungy bit of the copper metal here and it's given this a more refined and, and polished, sanded polished, uh, look to it which is just a really it's really elevated it to look way more expensive and precious and beautiful so um, that's a great result the only thing is that with that divot there we haven't mentioned uh, we haven't managed to actually sand that out which was our goal however I'm going to move on to the next thing yeah, it took me a while to get a response to Top Tank just because I had to consult with my my friend who's pretty into all of this stuff and a million different tools and things. They call him Tim the Tool Man, funnily enough. Anyway, so I've got a P400 sandpaper, which is a bit scrappy-doo, but it's a bit coarser than the other sandpapers, which I'm going to finish with. So I've got a P800 and a P1200, which I'll try and finish with to try and get that divot out. So I probably should have mentioned a little bit earlier that the idea with the sandpapers in general, if you're not aware, is the lower the number is, the coarser it is, and the higher the number is, the finer the sandpaper is. So uh, you may even want to start with something lower than a 400 to see if you can get out that groove there and then continue on and then when you get up to the 1200 it's just going to really polish it up and get rid of any little um, coarse bits that may have been created by uh, really going in there with the, the coarser grit sandpaper. So it's kind of a little bit of a, a process you need to go through. Here we have our gorgeous shiny copper pipe. I'm just gonna try and take it with the 400 and sand out that divot. Might sound a little bit muffled because I'm wearing my particulate mask. Don't want to be breathing in metal. So look, I'm not a, I'm not a tool person. I'm not very good with this kind of stuff.
And you can see it's starting to take away a little bit of it, which is good. I think it's definitely getting better. We wouldn't be able to kind of, I don't think, make an impact with that at all if we had have started with the 800 or the 1200. You really needed something a bit coarser. So you can see that's definitely made it a lot less kind of noticeable if you see that really deep gouge there and compare it to what we've done over here. So I think you could definitely sand it out if you keep going. And so let's just try and refine it a bit with the 800 and the 1200. I just found a different way of doing it which works a bit better which is actually moving the pipe over the sandpaper move the pipe over the sandpaper rather than trying to sand this way. I'm actually moving the pipe onto the sandpaper. Yay, we've actually had a lot of success in some areas there. You can see it's removed a lot of that tool mark. If you keep going, I'm sure that you can actually get that out all together. I'm just going to move on to the 800. There is a section here that's disappeared all together, pretty much. And then you can finish off with the 1200 sandpaper. Wow, yep, that's really, you can do it, success. You can see there's a tiny little area there, just along there, where we've completely removed that tool mark. Success. So if you didn't have one of these fine steel wool pads, you could also try one of those green scarers that you use in the kitchen to wash your dishes. I don't have one of those right now, but at the very least you'd think it would it would nicely clean and give you that, that nice kind of brighter sheen at the very least. So the reason why I actually recommended using this pipe cutter is because it's just really easy to do. It's a handy compact little thing and uh, you don't need a lot of pressure. I have a lot of chronic pain in my hands. The other alternative way that you could actually cut this pipe where you wouldn't get that tool mark is to actually use a hacksaw. And so my friend Timmy the tool man has told me that if you actually put the pipe in a vise, you'd get vise marks on it. So that's not ideal. However, you could uh, actually just rest it against something with a bit of material, rest it against something and then use a hacksaw to actually cut through it and then all you'll need to do is to sand the edges of the pipe not, and you won't end up with that tool mark. Uh, basically if you want to get rid of this and you don't want to do all of the work I'd recommend using a hacksaw otherwise yeah there will be a lot of work having to sand this little divot out if you wanted to. Um, one thing that I do recommend, which I think is incredible, is how this has actually come up with the steel wool. And I'll just show you, there's a little bit of, this is actually from a plumbing store, and I'll just show you if I can actually get this little bit of ink out. The link to the copper piping that I put on in the description box is to Amazon and it doesn't have any of this, but because this is an offcut from a plumbing store, I'm going to need to get this off too, so I'll just see if that comes off with the steel wool as well. check it out this is the finished product and 
it took hardly any pressure at all to get the ink off of the copper piping from the plumbing shop. That really has elevated this to the next level. I'm going to use this with absolutely all my copper bale pendants that I make in the future. And the reason why I thought this was so important to do a video on is because it just increases the amount of flexibility of the design of your polymer clay pendants. And you can put just wire on one tiny section in the middle and have that joined there rather than having to cover up the whole thing. So it just creates so many more possibilities in how you can create your art. So please, if you guys have any more comments or advice on how we can improve this copper bale technique even further or the way that we actually, we actually put the polymer clay onto the copper bale, I would really, really love to hear those. I'm sure other people would love to learn from that too. Anybody else out there, if you've got any questions about it, I'm happy to answer them for you or try my best to answer them for you. really happy to share all of my dragon eye secrets designs techniques and tutorials with you so thank you so much for supporting me and I'll see you in the next one